Hello, everyone. Uh, so from creative writing, we are moving to a new, uh, another creative domain. It's uh, drawing. Um, so thanks for joining us this afternoon, and thanks for staying late for the last talk. And so our presentation is titled uh, A Rough Sketch of the Freehand Drawing Process, Blending the Line Between Action and Artifact. Uh, I'm Pium Fernando, a fourth-year PhD student from the Arizona State University, and uh, my co-authors, Jennifer Weiler, she's a fifth-year PhD student, and she will be co-presenting with me today, and uh, Assistant Professor Stacy Kosnetso. Um, as a starting point for our presentation, I would like to share these two short video clips. Uh, so these are downloaded from YouTube. Uh, one in the left uh, is an artist doing a live action painting, and uh, the Actually, the left side here, yeah. Uh, it's an uh, artist doing an oil on canvas painting, uh, one of the many videos you can found, uh, can be found on YouTube. And both of these videos have been viewed and liked by millions. This general interest in, pre uh, in process reflects viewers' fascination with the skill and creativity involved in the movement of the artist's hand or the whole body. Within the HCI community, there is a well-established interest and respect for traditional artistic mediums, especially in the, uh, in the areas of hybrid fabrication, technology-mediated interaction uh, between artwork and audience, and documentation and curation of uh, art processes. Building on this rich body of work, our research is poised to focus more deeply on the use of process in the traditional art making, which could affect how art-related technology interactions are designed in the future. More specifically, we ask, what are the implications of sensing, visualizing, and sharing intimate aspects of the artistic processes? We investigated our research questions uh, through a custom implemented pencil drawing setup and conducted a study with artists, expert art viewers, and uh, members from general public. In this presentation, we first talk about our drawing setup then the methods used in our study and the findings. Uh, we conclude by discussing the broader implications of our work. We particularly choose to focus on uh, analog <coughs> pencil drawing uh, because it's considered to be one of the most basic art mediums. And there are several other unique advantages to drawing on paper uh, as opposed to using a digital drawing uh, tool such as tablets. Uh, so these include uh, the tactile pressure feedback, uh, direct hand-eye surface interaction, accessibility, and for many artists, the familiarity. Uh, to this end, uh, we developed a sensor-enabled pencil drawing setup, which can unobtrusively track the pencil movement and the pressure exerted on the drawing surface without disrupting the artist. Our system tra tracks the vertical and horizontal position of the drawing pencil using two cameras, mounted on the top and the left side uh, of the easel. Uh, images captured at 20 frames per second uh, from these cameras are processed by a MATLAB-based custom-implemented image processing program. So we use this program to determine the pencil uh, position in each frame of the camera. Uh, we also uh, painted uh, pencils in blue color. Uh, in addition, we use a green color background uh, to in increase the image processing accuracy. To sense the pencil pressure, we used an acoustic sensing technique we placed 12 electric mic microphone modules on the back sides of the easel and measured the intensity of the sound wave created by the friction between the drawing surface and the pencil tip. So we used this, uh, the intensity of the sound wave as a close approximation of the pencil drawing. Each of these modules were programmed to read the digital outputs of the, uh, the microphones 20, 20 times per second in sync with the two cameras of the pencil tracking system. By post-processing uh, the captured data, we generated video renderings using a custom implemented processing application, uh, which renders the pencil speed and the pressure exerted on the drawing surface as an animation. So you can see here uh, the pencil speed levels are uh, represented distinctly using uh, three colors, green, yellow, and red. And to uh, show the pencil press, uh, pressure, we used the light line thickness. Here are uh, three video renderings of three artists drawing the same object. So here you can see uh, some of them start with like very low pressure uh, speedy lines and then go on to add details. And some of them actually use uh, high pressure lines and like more detailed ones from the beginning. Um, 
Yeah, you can see several uh, like differences in the gestural technique they have. Uh, in addition, we also generated 3D bar-relief models from captured data. So bar-relief is a type of sculpture that consists of a raised image with a little overall depth. So we 3D printed them in order to create a tangible representation of the pencil pressure. So uh, more about this uh, can be found in the paper and how we generated these. So we use this drawing setup to explore, explore research questions in three contexts with artists, expert art viewers, and general public. First, we conducted a study with six experienced artists, where each of them individually created multiple pencil drawings using our setup. And uh, over, over the course of a week, uh, we held six individual drawing sessions with artists, each lasting roughly one hour. At the end of each drawing activity, the artists viewed the resultant video rendering, renderings and 3D bar relief models on a computer screen and engaged in a semi-structured interview. A week after, they were invited back for a critique-style group discussion. They were shown the video renderings and 3D bar relief models uh, of each other's drawings. Then we conducted a, crit uh, conducted a critique-style semi-structured group discussion with them where the artists reflected on each other's drawing styles and techniques based on the process information they could infer from our uh, video renderings and 3D prints. After that, we invited five expert viewers to join for an hour-long art viewing and discussion session. At the beginning, they were shown the pencil drawings from our individual drawing sessions and were asked to discuss any information they could infer about the drawing process from the, uh, the finished pieces. After that, we explained how, we, uh, how our system actually captured the artist's data and showed them the resulting video renderings, and we let them interact with the 3D printed models as well. During this uh, session, we facilitated group uh, discussions and uh, recorded their responses and conversations using audio recordings and uh, written notes. Uh, we also showcased the drawings, video renderings, and bar leaf sculptures in two art exhibits. During the first exhibit, participants filled out a survey about their reactions to the exhibit. This survey consisted of nine questions with typical seven-point Likert scale responses on agreement. However, this part of the research was not intended as a rigorous survey to evaluate our system, but was, a, but was meant to ser serve as a supplementary feedback. Uh, here, uh, we also showed the work as part of the arts track at TI uh, 2018 in Sweden. Uh, these are some of the work from that, uh, that art piece. Before we move uh, on to the findings, uh, there are several limitations in our methods which we like to acknowledge. Uh, due to the relatively lower <coughs> frame rate of the cameras and limitations of the costing sensing uh, based pressure sensing mechanism, our system is unable to capture uh, fast and subtle variations of uh, artist movements and uh, the subtle variation of variations of the pressure. In addition, our study is prone to self-selection bias as all artists, participants choose to be involved because they were in, uh, interested in freehand drawing. The results of our study might have been affected by novelty, uh, novelty and may not reveal insights about the long-term uses or non-uses. So we believe our work provides an important first step uh, towards sensing, visualizing, and sharing traditional art processes through digital technologies. Uh, from now onwards, uh, Jen is going to share the findings and discuss them. Thanks, Pium. I will now describe some of the findings from our study, focusing on the information participants inferred from our generated models, the implications of seeing drawing process, and curating and sharing process information. For this talk, we will be presenting feedback from the artist and art viewer participants simultaneously. If you're interested in learning more, our findings descri are described in greater detail in the paper. From the video renderings, both the artists and art viewers felt able to infer several pieces of information about the drawing process, including order of compilation, pressure, and aspects of artistic technique, such as the difference between gestural drawing and fine details. Additionally, when looking at their own work, several of our artist participants felt able to infer their emotional state through looking at the physical gestures. For example, upon seeing the video rendering of their first sketch, one participant stated, you can see when I feel a little bit nervous. When I'm feeling confident, my drawings go much faster. However, the majority of our art viewers felt unable to infer information about the artist's emotions. 
When using our easel, all of the artists were able to draw without difficulty and appreciate using traditional pencil on paper drawing. For many of the artists, viewing the generated videos and bas-relief sculptures was their first time seeing their drawing process without being actively engaged in it. They described the process information generated by our system as a potential means of getting feedback and enhancing the art viewing experience. In addition, most of the participants were interested in the possibility of using the digital representations as a way to identify changes in artistic techniques. For example, one artist was interested in seeing how her technique had changed after recovering from an injury. All of the artists who took part in our drawing study mentioned sharing their work publicly through exhibitions, art sales, or on social media. Sharing parts of their creative process was seen as a way to gain feedback, personal satisfaction, or attract potential buyers. To this end, participants suggested that seeing the sequential order of strokes and the pressure variations could enable deeper engagement with the underlying art making processes and the unique drawing style of the artist. The general audience viewers who took our survey likewise agreed that knowing more about the drawing process would help them appreciate the artist's work. However, artists also expressed two key reasons why they sometimes became hesitant to share aspects of their creative process. First, participants had general concerns over privacy and didn't want process sharing to intrude on their creative practice. To quote one of the artists, you have to have a personal engagement with the piece you are making. If you have six eyes watching you all the time, it isn't going to work. Second, our participants had broader concerns about the work not meeting certain standards and not being ready to share. As many of them mentioned, even for skilled artists, not every work meets their personal bar for excellence. These sentiments expressed by our participants illustrate a desire to keep some distance between themselves and the audience and maintain control over what others see of them and their work. Interestingly, while the artists we spoke to wanted to curate and limit how their process information was shared, they were also enthusiastic about sensing biometric data, such as heart rate, eye tracking, and pupil dilation. This information was viewed as a way to deepen engagement with the creative process behind the finished artwork. From the feedback we received from artists and art viewers, we gained insight into the use of process information in artistic practices. Our findings reveal opportunities for future HCI research in regards to designing new process-aware art viewing experiences and platforms for curating and sharing the creative process. In recent years, information art has emerged as a domain of interaction design, where artistic content has been generated based on the processing of digital data. These artworks show that information art can be used as a creative way to visualize digital information by presenting it as a form of artistic expression. In this light, we believe that collected art process data can be displayed as information art pieces integrated with the original static artworks. In turn, these collective digital physical art forms could provide dynamic, multi-sensory, and process-aware art viewing experiences. The concerns our artist participant raised over privacy lead us to ask how future HCI sharing platforms can support open dialogue between audience and artist, while at the same time taking into account concerns about privacy and observation. HCI research is already examining a range of mechanisms for and challenges inherent in curation of digital content, including approaches for slowing down digital consumption, ways to focus and clarify digital presence, and better understanding why and in what circumstances individuals are willing to share their personal information. Future platforms for sharing process information could explore the trade-off between showing large amounts of data that could potentially overwhelm the viewer and revealing only carefully curated information. This could enable dialogues between artists and viewers, support new forms of critique, and perhaps lead to new communities who want to learn about sharing process. During the study, participants expressed interest in seeing more intimate process data, such as eye tracking and heart rate monitoring during the creative process. This leads us to ask what it would mean to share biological information, which goes beyond sharing a person's finished creation or even crafting processes to displaying the innate physical, physiological, and psychological processes of a human organism during creative practice. Given what current trends in biosensing and personal informatics, HCI will likely engage with this question from technical, social, and philosophical perspectives. 
While our use of freehand pencil drawing provides a first step towards sensing, visualizing, and sharing traditional art processes through digital technologies, uncovering the nuances of other art mediums were beyond the scope of this study. Looking forward, we see many opportunities to utilize digital technologies to capture latent elements of a vast array of artistic practices, from tracking the movements of a paintbrush, to perceiving the pressure applied to clay by a sculptor, to sensing the subtle motions of a dancer. In our future work, we hope to improve the sensing mechanism of our system, expand our focus towards different art mediums and techniques, and engage in long-term collaborations with artists. Through this study, we explored how sensing, visualizing, and sharing of dynamic elements of traditional drawing processes might shape the art making and art viewing experience. We create a pencil tracking system that displays captured information as video renderings and 3D bas relief sculptures and use the system as a probe to learn about the importance of process information as part of the art making and art viewing experience. The feedback we receive from participants emphasizes the importance of curation, privacy, and control for those whose data is being collected. By making process visible and tangible, our work begins to blur the line between artistic process and finished art product and introduces new questions about how art will be created and viewed through the lens of HCI. Or to rephrase, how will HCI shape fine arts processes in the age of hybrid fabrication and social media sharing? Thank you. Hi, sorry, we can't really see each other. Um, this was really super interesting. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk more about what arti why artists were so interested in the biometric data and like recording that during the creative process. Um, so that was part of the feedback they gave on potential additions to the system. It seems that a lot of them felt that their sort of engagement with the creative process was a very physical part for them. And they felt like being able to see what parts of the image they were looking at while they were making decisions about where to draw or even if they were getting like excited or you know, really engaged in their work would be an interesting extra level of to see how would they were sort of engaging with the making process. Do you want to add anything to that? Um, yeah, it's pretty much covered. The, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, one of the uh, important factors is like, so they wanted to get feedback about their process and then what they were feeling and how, I mean, so they valued that part. So it's kind of an, uh, this additional information could help them in a way to like reflect on their process and how they feel and how their body works. Yeah. So actually like, as you say, like this is a <coughs> initial step. And so we kind of uncovered this kind of uh, the future directions that we can explore more and go deep. In. One more question in the back. Hi. Oh, sorry. Celine the Tulip from UNC Charlotte. Um, I wonder, in addition to the privacy aspects related to sort of being observed while they worked, if any of the artists had concerns about sort of intellectual property, like giving away their process in such a way that it could actually be copied by others and imitated to the point where they actually sort of could lose some of their success in that way. Um, well, in terms of sharing, many of the artists we talked to already shared sort of not process in like the sketching, but process in an early sketches and their sort of design concepts through social media. So we didn't really get much of a sense that they were concerned about losing intellectual property. Um, as well, uh, several of the artists that we talked to also work as teachers, and they were actually interested in the possibility of using this tool potentially as a teaching tool for people. Um, there seemed to overall be a sense that while seeing the process, you could learn to mimic the technique, there wasn't a sense really that the per someone else could really co-opt their drawing style to that degree any more than you know watching a time lapse of someone creating a piece of work that you could maybe learn to interpret their style and copy it a little bit, but it's you're not losing it. It's not someone else taking it. That was the overall yeah. sense that we got through the feedback. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, in the words of our second speaker, creativity is awesome. So were the presentations. 
uh, and the questions as well. Uh, so thank you so, so much to the presenters and to everyone in the audience, and uh, see you all later on. Thanks. Thank you.